Good morning and welcome to Kingdom at Home. We are so delighted that you chose to join us today. Service will begin shortly. I've just got one quick reminder for you. Our annual prayer advance and corporate fast begins this week. We are hosting it virtually, so please join us live on Facebook, 8 p.m. nightly. And on Saturday, we close out in person at the Sanctuary, 3B East Atlantic Drive at 6 a.m. Now let's get ready for the word. Today, Bishop speaks to us about when things don't make sense. I know we've all been there and wondered what was really going on. In today's message, you'll learn that it's all about perspective and trusting the process. Tune in. Let's hear how it all comes together. I'll be right back after the message with some more information about our upcoming events. See you soon. Well, let us bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I am so honored that I can come to you this morning and continue this quest on perfecting the body of Christ through the word of God. It is a delight and a joy that you've tuned in this morning. I pray God's perfect favor be your portion. To all of our friends around the world, those in Canada, in the United States, in Grand Bahama and the Bahamas alike, who tune in every morning to be a part of this experience, I want to say to you, thank you so much. I would also uh, request of you to, to share it. Share it as much as you can. I think you are helping the body of Christ, as well as this ministry, to expand its tentacles throughout the world fulfilling God's mandate. And so as you press that share button, you are helping in virtual evangelism because every life that is blessed because of your obedience, you will be partakers of before the Lord. And so I want to thank you for coming and being a part of this experience. I want to say this much to you, that God is up to something amazing. And so I want you to tune in at the end of this, you'll hear some updates on some of the things that are going to happen for our ministry, and we want you to be a part of it. I also want to um, encourage you to, to lock in, connect with us. Um, you know, send your, your text, let us know, um, to 727-8999, let us know um, you, you're connected, and we will connect with you so that you can have all the relevant information as it released to our house. And so I just wanted to get that out to you and I want to let you know that kingdom is indeed on the move. And we're excited about what God's up to this morning. As I prepare myself to go into the word of the Lord, I want you to go with me in prayer. Amen. Father, we are just so delighted. We're honored that you have afforded us this great privilege that we can come into your presence once again through this vehicle of prayer. We pray now, God, that you would enlarge our territories, expand our minds to hear what you would say to us. Let nothing be declared that you have not approved. Let everything be done for your honor and your glory. Let lives be transformed by the power of your word. Now grant your servant clarity of thought, precision of expression, bend in my will, make it thine. This I ask in Jesus' name, and all say amen. Wherever you are, say amen. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to you from a subject that is somewhat a little stranger than what I'm accustomed to, but I believe it is critical for this season. And I believe all of us have been here at some point in our lives when we have had to question some stuff. And I want to use for a subject this morning, when things don't make sense. Have you ever been to the place when the things around you don't make sense? Have you ever been to that place in your life when you sought answers from someone? but the answers you have expected was not forthcoming. Have you been to the time, to the place in your life when um, you were dealt an unjust blow and you waited on the person that did the harm to come and reconcile 
but to no avail? Have you been to the place when you felt that you deserve an apology, you deserve healing from the scar or the, the cut or the wound that was inflicted upon you unjustly, but in your waiting, the persons who or person who did the pain or the hurt seem to have moved on with their lives and you have not been even a consideration. So while you left bleeding, they were moving on with their lives. I don't know if you have ever been there, but there are so many people around the world who have experienced this trauma. The sad reality is that many people are stuck waiting on closure from those who have hurt them. They're expecting people to release them from the pain of the injustice that has been levied to them. If you have ever overcome this reality, then it had to have taken something to press you beyond this experience. We must be willing to go and grow whether they give us a free pass, a, a release or not. If we are ever going to survive, we must be willing, hear me friends, to go and grow beyond the pain, the hurt, the wound that has been inflicted on us. What should be my posture then if I am ever going to get past the hurt of yesterday? So what can I truly do to embrace my healing today? What can I do? What can you do to move past the infliction of the hurt that has been levied unjustly upon you. I believe that God gives closure to those willing to move forward. God is faithful and committed to healing those who are willing to move forward. God is faithful and committed to those who are willing to press beyond the pain to the place of their divine deliverance. If you are willing to press beyond it, I'm here to tell you that you are a conduit, you are a recipient, you are a person that is qualified for the breakthrough of God. I believe it with all my heart. The sad reality is that we are so engrossed in the pain that we don't see God's hands of deliverance reaching to us to bring us out with victory. The pain is not your problem. It's what you're learning in the midst of the pain. It is what you are prepared to garnish and gain in the midst of the experience so that when you come out, you come out better than you was. What problems we face is most of us are so focused on the pain that we don't see what the pain was designed to do. We are so focused on the problem that we don't see what the problem was really designed to do. The devil may have meant it for your bad, but God saw your victory in the backside of the problem. When Joseph was placed in the pit, it looked dim, dim. It looked hopeless. But God saw a palace in his future. And his faithfulness to going through the process gave him the victory that he experienced at the end. David saw a field with a sheep when his brothers were out. But God saw a king in his future. And the process of being faithful with the sheep brought him the kingship 
of Israel. I'm here to tell you, sometimes you never see your future. But God said, if you stay faithful, you will pass through with flying colors. If you stay the cause, if you stay moving, if you stay trusting, God will bring you out. But it demands pushing. He who begun a good work in you shall complete it. But you've got to allow him to take you through the process so he can bring you to your end of purpose. We must understand in this season that many things we experience in our life oftentimes don't make sense initially. And sometimes the tendency to become overwhelmed by the pressure of it that we lose focus in the one who is with us in the process. Moses told the children of Israel that he was going on the mountain to talk with God. They were expecting to see him come back, but he never returned. For Moses was their leader. You remember the story. And their leadership was now gone. What was, what we must understand and learn from this is we need to learn how to move without answers. Sometimes the answer you're looking for, you may never get. And so when you don't get it, you've got to keep pressing. You've got to keep trusting. You've got to keep moving until God makes the crooked path straight and your rough edges smooth. I'm speaking to the people who are waiting for answers. Why didn't I get healed? Why didn't my mom get healed? Why didn't my sister have to go through that? Why we never got these experiences? Why this didn't? Why and why and why? Listen, sometimes I want you to understand that the answer may not be forthcoming. And when it is, and you've got to trust God anyhow. When it don't make sense, trust him. You and God and said this, oh, I, 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 well, he did it for that. He, but, but you don't know what God's plan is concerning your life. One of the apostles asked Jesus a question. And the question was asked, say, Master, um, on that day you come, what are you going to do with John? And he was referring to the one that laid on Jesus' breast. They wanted to know Jesus rebuked them yet answered. He said this question, his, in, in response to the question he asked, he said, listen, I've given you your assignment, feed my sheep. But if I choose to keep him until I come back, what is it to you? See, sometimes people are messed up in their mind because they, they're worried about what you getting out the deal. And so they, they, they drop their assignment to figure out what's God given him. I want you to understand that sometimes in this life, I can't be focused on what other people's getting, what God's doing with them. I need to stay focused to the assignment that he has entrusted in my care. It's dangerous in this season when all your life is spent on what other people are doing. If you're busy with worrying about what other people are doing, you'll never get done what God called you to do. You've got to stay single focused. Our season, our year today, is strategic aim. You've got to stay focused if you're going to fulfill what God has you because you only have a short time to get done what God has purposed for your life. And so they were worried about Moses and, and they were looking, looking, looking. But he never came back. Children of Israel didn't know what to do after the death of Moses. But they knew that what was promised to them was more important than what had happened to them. Do you get that? See, they understood that even though Moses didn't come, what was promised to them was more important. You got to know in this day that sometimes life throws a curveball at you. 
And in those days when life throw a curveball, when things don't look good, then you've got to stay deep and say, what's next? And make it happen. Just trust him and keep walking until God makes sense of the process. You don't sit and fold your arms and say, I'm not moving until God says something. You and God can't bargain like that. You've got to be able to get up and keep walking and say, I'm going to trust him until he does. If he doesn't tell me to turn, then I'm going to keep walking straight. But my hope is in the Lord. The unfortunate reality in Christendom is a lot of people want make great demands from God who gives God very little to work with. Some people say, well, all you need is very little. But it's according to your faith. Some people don't give God nothing to work with. And they want this happy life, but they're not prepared to make the sacrifices necessary to walk into the fullness of what God's purpose for them. Your life sometimes is stagnant, not because God is unfaithful. It's because you are not willing to put your sweat equity in what is required of you to move forward. God is committed to his word. Hear me. I don't want to sound like a pounder, but I've got to tell somebody who's listening this morning. God wants more from you and he's expecting more from you. And the seesaw up and down is insufficient. And what happens is you become tired. The devil's working and smiling because he knows your inconsistency and he's using it against you. That's why some stuff ain't manifesting. When will you commit and say, God, I give you all of me. And I won't lean to my own understanding. I'm not today going to be all fired up for God and preferable. And the next day, well, I am finding excuses for why you're where you are. Get up. Shake yourself. And trust the God of the Bible. It's crazy to live some of the book and not all of the book. It's crazy. To have the moral fortitude to walk in this book. But the faith that is necessary to fulfill the mandate to which God called you. You don't want to walk in. The Bible said without faith, without confidence, without believing it's impossible to please him. God needs you to trust him. I trust all the other little things. But I can't trust him. Well, you're. Your relationship is void without faith. So you're saying, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about when life don't make sense. I'm giving you the nuggets necessary to stay the course when your compass seemed to be going in all directions. You got to know how to navigate by your North Star. You got to know how to navigate when darkness comes. That you can trust your compass when it's flowing. So if the compass working, use a compass. If your compass ain't, why? I got to know how to trust God through this. Because some people won't be fair in life. And sometimes disappointment is going to come. And when disappointments come, what do you do? Do you fold up and die? Or do you make up your mind? I'm going to press forward. Forgetting those things which are behind. Reaching for the things which are before. I press towards the mark. For the prize of the high calling. of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to press. I'm going to find my focus point. I'm going to stick to it. And I'm going to keep moving. I know the devil's going to talk to my in my head. And say this don't make sense. I know he's going to tell me. You're going to go. You're going out just like this. Nothing's good going to happen to you. Yes. Why are you listening to him? It is not the report of the Lord. Shake it off. And say I will believe God. You sit there. You walk in it. Then you get discouraged. You will die never fulfilling it. Mad with God. And go to a Christless hell. All because you will not brave it up. You won't soldier up, the young people say. And take your place as an heir of Christ. I'm here to tell you some things won't make sense. But you've got to keep forging ahead. I've got to keep forging ahead. I'm reminded 
in Scripture in 2 Samuel chapter 12, I think it's around 16, when King David had fathered a child with Uriah's wife Bathsheba. And God indicated that he was, as a result of his act, that he was going to cause the child not to live. We are told in the scripture that as God consulted him, David went into sackcloth and ashes and began to pray. He interceded before God. He asked God to spare the child. He said, oh God, spare the child. And he began to pray earnestly and passionately that God would have mercy on the child. And God said, came back to, to David and said, David, this one's gone. No, Israel will not benefit from this, neither will you. He said, and, I, and the Bible says, and he took it. And even as David fasted, God took the child and David stopped praying. He stopped, he started eating, he brushed himself off. He said, listen, I fasted and pleaded while I had an opportunity. But after God answered and God did what he wanted to do anyhow, I got up, shake it off and kept moving. That's what you got to do in times like this. When you make requests and the requests you made don't turn out the way you desire, get yourself up, brush yourself off and keep going. When things don't make sense, when you expect an outcome, you've been believing God that he would have He would have healed the person, but he never healed the person the Lord gives, the Lord takes. Bless me the name of the Lord. I've come to learn and I'm not trying to be sad. I'm not trying to be over spiritual, but I need to bring balance. The reality is sometimes God answers what we want. Sometimes God answers in the negative beyond what we expect. And whatever he does, the Lord will answer based upon his sovereign will. Can I let you in? One day I was praying and I was asking God concerning a team and I was asking God, please, God, please let Golden State win. And I was praying. No one had more faith than me. And I was asking God, give them this one. Lord, I promise, please give them this one. And God didn't give it to them. I pleaded, I begged. I believe some other people was on the other side asking God to give the other team. My point is, sometimes it falls in our favor, sometimes it doesn't. But what do you do? Brush yourself off and wait for another day. Because there's another fight in your future with a victory mark in your hand. I want you to understand me when I say, what do you do when things don't make sense? When it doesn't make sense, trust God in the process. When it doesn't make sense, trust God to bring you out despite how it presently looks. When it doesn't make sense, trust the fact that he who begun a good work in you shall complete the work. Trust the process. Trust the God in the process, who put the process together, who knows the end of the process, and who will bring you out of the process. Trust him in it. We become so instant-minded that patience have been thrown out the window. You know that's the truth. We've been hitting it. Lord, do this. I can fast three days and pop it here. And we've been using fasting like some mumbo stick to get God to move. And when that is not the case, it's about the breaking of us and making us better for the servitude, the service of God. And we've been trying to declare and decree all kinds of things, hoping we can change the mind of God, not asking what is your will in this process. And sometimes, God wants to build spiritual muscles in you so he takes you the long way. Israel was going through the wilderness. It would have taken them 11 days had they gone by way of the Philistines. But God took them 40 years and it's question and answers. He says, and I took you this long way that I may prove you to know what is in your heart. He says, I 
took you this long way because I had to burn some dross out of some of you so that I can take the real militant warriors into Canaan. He had to take a mind change. And I'm here to tell you, God is building you from the inside out so you can be what he needs you to be. I know this ain't what you want. You want a prophetic word that tell you you're coming out and you know you've done nothing to deserve coming out because you just want God to like a genie, blink his eye and give you what you want. But it's going to take processing. It's going to take a dying of yourself. It's going to take a crucifixion of your flesh so God's glory can be revealed in your life. So when you stand in your future, you stand with a confidence knowing that the God I serve is well able to deliver. Nobody got to tell me he's, he's not a delivering God. I know in whom I believe. I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him. God wants a relationship with you. God wants a covenant connection with you and me. And it comes through a crucifixion of our flesh. Hear me, friends. When things don't make sense, what do you do? 2 Kings 5, the story is told about Naaman. He had been stricken with leprosy and Naaman was an aristocrat. He was wealthy and he knew about the finer things in life. And he had a young girl, a little girl that worked with his wife that was from Israel. She understood the power of God because of her upbringing. But she had the greatest love and respect for Naaman and his family. No doubt they were good to her. And, and as a slave girl, as a master, one who worked with, with Naaman's wife, the Bible tells us that she said, Oh, I wish that my Lord would have gone for one of the prophets of Israel who would have come, and Tamara would have come and deal with this situation of leprosy. The because of her request, he inquired and he sent a letter to the king and he requested. And then the king was offended because the king said, oh, now he thinks I'm God. That I determine who, who lives and dies or, or who heal and who's not. Is he trying to pick a fight with me? And, and I'm paraphrasing. And all of a sudden, the Bible said that Elijah got word that the king had rented his gown. He, in, he inquired and discovered that there was a man named Naaman, a wealthy man who had um, an issue with leprosy. He went and sent a message and he said, listen, go and tell him to come see me. Let's talk about this. Naaman comes. When Naaman comes, he sends his servant out. He never even comes to Naaman. He sends his servant out. Tell Naaman, tell him to go and wash in the Jordan seven times and he will be made whole. Naaman was offended because he was an aristocrat. How dare you, a, a, a great man of my stature, come to your house. You didn't have even the decency to come out and meet me. You send your servant just to give me some stuff. And then furthermore, all of these beautiful rivers, Abana and Farpa, that was in Damascus, now you send me to this old dirty Jordan? Who you think I am? You, do you know who I am? I'm Naaman. But the Bible said, the little young girl said to him, say, 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 Master, listen. If he had asked you a big thing to do, you would have done it. All he asked you is something simple. Why not just oblige the prophet? His heart was pretty wet, and he was, and he dipped seven times, and the Bible said he was made whole that very minute. I want you to know that sometimes it don't make sense how he does it, but we've got to trust him in the process. Don't forfeit your blessing because it is not packaged the way you expect it to be. Sometimes God will heal your heart before he heals your body. Sometimes God will heal your body and hope that the healing of your body heals your heart. We don't know why he does what he does, but God does what he does because he's sovereign. He doesn't have to ask questions. We are the, the, the 
clay and he's the potter. He fixes and fashions us after his will. I'm here to tell somebody today, shake it off. Stop getting caught up in your feelings and missing what God has for you. You're getting old every day and you're not benefiting. You will go and you will exit this earth never experiencing God's best because your attitude is your liability. I pray to God I'm getting to your heart today. I feel this in the innermost recesses of my heart. God wants more from you. And he's saying, are you willing to make the sacrifices necessary to experience all that I have for you? God is not going to babysit us and just give us because we call ourselves quote unquote Christians. He's going to give us because we are willing to fulfill his requirements as heirs of Christ. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you will. If ye abide in me and my word abide in you. Sometimes there's no abiding in nothing. His word in us and we, we only got a fingernail in him. We don't even have a foot or a body. We just got a foot or a toe. But we want the benefits of the faithful. We want the benefits of those who have pressed through and ridiculed and ostracized and those who have gone through much and then we want the same results. Friends, you can sacrifice the eternity of God for the trivial, temporary, temporary excitement of your now. And the unfortunate reality is many are giving up eternity with God for a few years of their of a prosperous now. It's unfortunate. But I want you to know that eternity is longer than time. And this is why it has to make sense first in our heart and our minds. See, if I get it in my heart and I get it in my mind, even though it don't make sense around me, my heart's fixed. That I, I know that he's going to finish what he started. I know it doesn't look like what I'm believing God for. But I know in whom I believe. I know that it looks like I'm behind in the race. That all of my friends have claimed and have, have, have gotten a, a better start than me. They got their stuff. But he who finished last. The thing I love about God. He says the last will be first and the first will be last. Listen, God have a way of switching the, the line where those who seem to be starting last will have the best of the deal. I'm here to tell you, listen, there was a man, and I want to, to, to verify this in scripture. There was a man, and this man went out to the corner of the marketplace where, where people were picked up to be hired, and the Bible say, and the Lord came, and he picked up a few for the first hour for the first watch and he picked those up and the man was standing there and then he came at the second um, session and he picked up a few more in the middle of the day and he picked up a next but that man stayed there all day and then at the 11th hour the bible says that the man came back and he saw some still standing and he said why stand here idle all day and he said because nobody picked me and he said okay well come work and whatever's good i'll give you he he had to work for one hour all of them bore the burden of the whole day for a penny he worked for one hour and he got a penny Tell me, God, ain't I able to bless you? So when he got his penny, the rest were upset and said, hey, this ain't fair. He, we worked all day, you give us a penny. He worked for one hour and you give him a penny. The, the Lord came back and said, wait, what was our agreement? A penny for the day. Now, if I choose to pay him for his persistency to stay in the race, to stand there all day, I'm not paying him for the labor. I'm paying him for persistence. I'm paying him for sticking it out. I'm impressed that he didn't allow discouragement to send him back home. I'm paying him for standing there in the heat of the day all day. He, that showed me his heart. 
Some people gonna get paid for labor and some people gonna get paid for persistence. For you keep going, keep pushing, keep pressing. And that's what God's gonna reward you for. Not for the quitting. Not for the getting mad every minute. Cause, cause you, you just want it. All right. So God was to blink and give you everything you want. Give you the beautiful home, give you the family, give you the children, give you the nice job, the big paying job, then what? You know what he's going to do? He's going to lose you. Then you're going to serve him. If you can't serve him in times of difficulty, you think you're going to serve him in times of prosperity? If God can't get the little from you now, you think he's going to get the much? If he can't get the twenty dollars out of your two hundred, do you think he's gonna get your two million out of twenty million? He who's faithful over little shall God make rule over much. Hear me. It's about your commitment in the little things. If you are prepared to stick it out, things don't make sense. When it don't make sense, trust God in the process. When what you're looking for don't come, trust God in the process. Believe that the God you serve is able to keep you in the process. And guess what? Naaman got healed because he listened to the little girl when she said, if he had asked you a big thing, you would have done it. Why not trust him with the little? If God simply say, trust me, despite what you see, believe that I'm faithful and just to deliver, that I am true to my word. If you believe it, he'll do it. And then you have a scrutiny. You have a cross-examination in your mind by a devil who will tell you it ain't coming. Look at it. Another year passed. Another birthday. Nothing. And you fall victim to the lies of the devil. I'm here to tell you, shake it off. Stop blaming God for what you know is not him. God is saying, I'm counting on you to be true in heart me. If you be true in faith, now I have something to work with. I believe God. I believe he's going to turn it around. Got up this morning, my daughter, my wife, she came into our room, we were talking just before service, and she said, I just feel God's about to do something wonderful. My wife jumped in. Oh yeah, I feel it. I've been feeling it. I jumped in. Why? Because I came into agreement with what they said. The Lord is about to turn our mourning into dancing. I don't know where it's coming. I don't know how. I looked at a big figure and what the expenditures of the house and, and how the money is depleted because of COVID people are not doing all they should, but I'm not moved because I believe God's miracle hand is in the process. And I said to him, I believe God will either send it or he'll use our five loaves and two fishes and make a miracle out of it. However it does, God's going to be glorified in this process because I'm not going to move by what the devil want me to believe. However it looks, your best seasons are ahead of you. Can you believe God for greater? It's not about stuff. Don't get me wrong. I know in whom I believe. It's about the confidence that I have in the man, the God, who's able to do what he says he will do. And so, don't lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. And I'm here to tell you that he shall direct your path. Joseph. I'm going to leave it with you. Joseph. 
didn't make sense to Joseph at the beginning. Being hated by brothers didn't make sense because I'm, what? Why would you hate me? Because daddy loved me. Why, why would you do this? And why would you plan first to kill me? And then one of the brothers had to decide, no, 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 let's kill him. He's, he's our blood. Uh, let's put him in this hole, this empty hole. Let's sell him. Let's just get rid of him. And they're willing to put their past, their, their dad through pain of lost just to, to appease their ego and their, their, their jealousy. There's some people who just don't want you. You remind them of what they have not yet accomplished and it's hurting them and they hate the fact that you look good with little you don't even have all of it, and they still mad with you. Could you imagine when God really blow you up? If you're mad now, what are you going to do when God really finish his handiwork in your life? And so they sold him, and he went through the process. But the thing I love about Joseph, and he's one of my favorite characters of Scripture, uh, uh, personality of scripture. And, and what, what I loved about Joseph is that Joseph stayed consistent through every experience. The Bible said the Lord was with him. He was with him in the pit. And the Lord was with him in part of his house. And the Lord was with him in prison. And the Lord was with him in the palace. You've got to make sure that the Lord is with you in every facet of your life. He was consistent. Even when he told the, 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 the butler, when you, when you come out, the cupbearer, he said, when you come out, please remember me because sometimes the process is hard. And he said, remember me because you get overwhelmed by the fact that I thought God would have worked by now. Our flesh wars against our confidence, but he still held his integrity. He still trusted the God that he knew was able to deliver. And he came back to the point and he said, listen, when he became the king, the prime minister, he said, now I understand. God was, post, was preparing a posterity for my future, for your future. So God was setting you up, setting me up to keep you eating. I want you to know God's got you. It may not make sense now, but keep your hope and trust in God. It may not make sense now, but the God is your refuge. He is your very present help in the time of trouble. Don't lean to your own understanding. I'm speaking to somebody. Stop getting riled by simple things that is designed to build you internally so you can be the vessel fit for the master's use. He is preparing you, but every time you grow off the handle and you act like you're not a citizen of heaven, then you bring reproach to heaven and you don't look like the God you want to be in his image and likeness. So change your heart. Be real and honest. He is well able to deliver. So how do we get out of this? I leave you this, I'll finish. One, admit the emotion. Admit the emotion. God, I'm hurting. I'm angry and I feel mad. I feel this wasn't fair. Admit the emotion. Stop acting like you're good and you know you ain't good and you're speaking and spewing out vomit. Admit the emotion. He is faithful and just. Be willing to acknowledge where you are and call the emotion out. You're not good. You're not healthy for me. It is here that you will Ask God to help you and it's here that God will begin to start spiritual surgery on your life. But you've got to admit the emotion. Present your emotion to God. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm struggling with. And watch God turn it around for you. Next thing, second thing, acknowledge that you're not entitled. That it's because of the graciousness of God that you are blessed. Gratitude breaks the back of entitlement. Gratitude breaks the back of entitlement. 
acknowledge, God, you don't have to do this. There's nothing I can, no trump card I can present to you that says, I deserve this, but for your grace. I'm thankful and I'm grateful and I realize that except you build the house, we labor in vain who build it. Except you keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. I need you. Everything I get is from you. When it don't make sense, I give you praise. If this is as far as you want us to go, then I've got to trust you in the process. You know the way that we take. When you would have tried us, we shall come forth as pure gold. Be gracious in the process. Be thankful to the God you serve. He's waiting to be a blessing. When things don't make sense, trust God in your process. Your process is not forever. It is what it is. Process to bring you to a place that you will be prepared and fixed for waiting to be used and displayed for God's glory. Amen and amen. Today I want to pray for those of you who've been battling in your hearts and your minds. And you're saying, Bishop, this makes sense. I've been wrong, but guess what? God was not unaware of what I was going to go through. No, he may not. He put that rape on you, be that um, beating, that assault. No, he didn't do that to you. But he'll bring you through it. He knew the path you would take. And he is willing to use that experience to deliver others. God will make the best. He'll make lemonade out of your lives. He will make lemonade out of your lives. You make a great refreshing drink out of your sour situations. Trust me. When it don't make sense, trust the process. And trust the God of the process. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for every hurting person watching this experience today. Touch them where they hurt most. I decree that the balm of heaven would touch them from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet. Let this be a life transforming moment for them in the name of Jesus. Break the back of the enemy. Let them rally from this experience even as they move around and they feel uncomfortable by this message. Let it penetrate and permeate their hearts and bring healing in the name of Jesus. God, give them victory out of this situation, that they will become truly conduits of your blessing in your manifestation. The day I command right now every past hurt to go, I pray, Father, that those who may not have come back to say sorry, that they can heal past it and still heal and recover and rebound and be all that you purpose, that they will not take it into their marriages, they will not take their past hurts into their future and become an irritation to those they are connected with. I decree in the name of Jesus, total healing in Jesus' name, by the power of God, I decree it, and I declare it, and I call it in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. I pray that you are blessed by this word. I pray that you continue to eat it. Play it over and over. Play it, send it to your friends. I'm here to tell you it's about healing. It's about deliverance. God wants to use you greatly. And he has purposed you to be a vessel, a qualified vessel for his use. You have been destined to succeed. God bless you. And so when you come to that place in your life, when life don't make sense, Trust what God is doing in you. Keep connected to him and he will truly direct your path. It may not be instant, it may take a while, but your faith will get you true. God bless you. Have an amazing Sunday. May the peace of God be your portion. Don't forget, share it. Love you. Until next time. Wow. Did you just have an aha moment like I did? Finally, you can be at peace with the process and accept the journey knowing God is with you. 
A word from the Lord always brings clarity. Thank you for watching today. If you were blessed by today's message, please share it with your family and your friends. We are grateful for the continued financial support of our faithful partners. We humbly thank you. If you're new to the kingdom and you'd like to partner with the vision or donate to this ministry, our banking info is on the screen. Or you can text the word GIVE to our mobile number, 242-727-8999. It's just one more day, guys, before our annual prayer advance and corporate fast, which begins February 1st, and runs through to the 6th. Join us on Facebook Live, 8 p.m. nightly, and receive the word that God has waiting for you. Be reminded that all evening auxiliary meetings are canceled during this time, but Kingdom Roundtable and Women's Ministry will resume their regular schedule next week. Tuesday morning prayer at 5.30 a.m. continues. We have a corporate prayer and we would love as many of you who can join us, please do so. Especially since it's the start of our Prayer Advance 2021. The meeting ID and password is on the screen. For up to the minute announcements and more information on this event and all else going on at the Kingdom, visit our social pages. Kingdom Worship Center International on Facebook and KWCI242 on YouTube and Instagram. Or text the word Connect Me to 242 727 8999. Tell your family and friends to like, subscribe, and share. We want to get the Word of God out to the whole world. Don't forget, you can join us for in person services at the sanctuary. 3B East Atlantic Drive at 7.30 a.m. Wear your masks. All COVID-19 safety protocols fully enforced. Once again, thank you for watching today. Remember, the Word of God says He'll never leave us or forsake us. He'll be with us always, in the pit and in the palace. Trust the process and stay on your journey. Happy Vision Month, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time on Kingdom at Home. We love you.